but I don't know Thank if they're for the parents or for our administration. Should I just... Do you want to just put yeah. them on the table and can I if we can answer them? one more thing. The MTA um, did approve it today. Okay. Um, that once you it, it comes here, if you guys approve, then we can move forward. It does require the... It, 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 it does not require board approval, approval though. Yeah. Uh, who will be responsible for transporting the students to Scarborough Heights? The other district. Right. Okay. That's correct. That's how it and, and will those students travel to and from uh, games on our Scarborough bus? I don't think that they're going to come to Scarborough before they go to a game. I, I, right. That it really depends where the game is. That's how it works with Wyndham. Um, what made sense is that we were traveling to Wyndham and then turn around and going, you know, in another direction that it made more sense for us to leave our school and go to the game. That's what we did. And they, you know, they just made sure that they were there at the same time the bus would arrive. That way they still went in as a team. And yeah. If we charge a participation fee for our students, will they be required to do that as well? They should that, be. That's how it, yes. Yeah. Okay. What percentage of ice time will that district participate in? In terms of a of a cost, yes. Um, I don't I don't know if that's been thought about, Michael. I mean, David, do you have any? Uh, I don't think there's going to be required to spend any, but that's speculation. I would. So Mr. Legay is going to answer that. Okay. And I I'm just putting the questions out. You may not have the answers tonight. Well, I think we did. Did you have? Well, as as um as parents of, of boosters, we participate in the softball and the bingo hall. It is our major fundraiser, and the majority of that money goes to save the ice time. So as a parent of a uh, hockey player, you're required to serve your hours at the um, bingo hall. So as parents of players, they would be required to do that as well. And that, So that would be their input to financing the ice time. So if I could just piggyback on Jackie's a little bit. So there's no extra cost to the district at all for them to participate. They're going to bear all the costs associated with the normal student athlete participation yes. of fundraising, booster raising, and athletic fees to their to your, their district. Yes. Okay. Who will be responsible for the supervision of the students? The coach. Our coach. Okay. And my last question at the moment is this. Part of the requirement is that uh, we come up with a name that identifies both schools. And has that been discussed? There was no, there was no, no. plan. I just changed the name. Um, the, that, I spoke with my, with my AD today, Chris Hughes, and when they had the meeting, um, that was discussed and it's going, it's going to stay in Red Storm, Scarborough. There's not going to be any mention of Soxy Valley. It's going to stay, everything's going to stay the same. I can answer some questions for you. Sorry I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> you want to catch your breath first? Or? <laughs> I think this I'm sorry you're late. Too. Last one. Yeah. <laughs> it's the, the naming convention piece. The, um, <clears throat> Two years ago, I began some talks with uh, Mr. Hughes, the athletic administrator of Socopy Valley, and he had two student athletes that were interested in uh, playing girls hockey. Um, he tried a number of, of other schools that, um, and he was unsuccessful as they already had co-op teams. Um, and so we said that we would be willing to take them on. Um, and we had our, I went to the MPA management committee uh, today, as a matter of fact, this morning, and we petitioned for three waivers. Um, one of them was for the six month rule um, because we did not submit our application six months ahead of time. Um, one was for um, school enrollment. Um, because any com any combination team requires um, all the schools that are combining to have a school enrollment less than the largest school in the state. And so we have to uh, get a waiver for that as well because we would, uh, we would certainly be beyond that. Um, and the third waiver that Scarborough requested was um, a waiver not to change our team name. And so all three waivers 
this morning were granted by the MPA Management Committee, and so we feel confident, you know, moving forward with this. Chris? Is there any way that we'll be able to, not to differentiate them, but to distinguish the young ladies who are going to be joining from Socopy, whether it's a patch or some other distinction on the uniform or something, so they can, or are they going to be just simply Scarborough and... For this year, it would be simply Scarborough for this cycle. It's a two-year cycle, and so we have permission from the MPA for these two years, and then we'd have to re-petition after that, and then, you know, my feeling was that we'll have some obstacles moving forward with this because it's new to Scarborough. We don't have to do combo teams. Typically, the schools that do combo teams have to do them to be able to have a team. We have not ever had to do that. Our enrollments are really healthy, as you know. So what we felt was that, you know, part of our identity is tied to our name, and so the case that we made was that for this first cycle, as we adjust to a combo team, that we didn't want to lose that identity as part of this process. So they granted that waiver, and so it's going to be just Scarborough this first cycle, and then we'll figure out a plan from there. But we wanted to just give these girls an opportunity to participate in the sport of hockey, and unfortunately in our state, hockey is going the other way, actually. It's an expensive sport. There are not a lot of rinks, and participation levels are low. We're very fortunate in Scarborough that that's not the case, but in a lot of schools it is. And so, you know, some of the schools are struggling to be able to provide these opportunities for children. So we wanted to be a good association member, and we wanted to be able to provide this opportunity to these young ladies. And just, sorry, last follow-up question. There's no cut in girls. There's no tryouts. There's no cuts, correct? There hasn't been. Okay. We don't anticipate that this year. That's why we agreed to. If we were going to cut, then we would have to reevaluate that. Understood. Thank you. Thank you. What? Oh, sorry. What year are these two young ladies that are joining the team? Are they, what, level 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th? No, I think they're juniors. Junior and senior. Junior and senior. Okay. Jackie? Have our hockey players been approached on this? Do they know that this is happening? These young ladies have participated with them in the off-season and are familiar to them, and that's part of the reason and part of our petition with the MPA, because there is a distance, certainly, between our schools. And so part of the reasoning behind this relationship is because our kids are known to these girls, and these girls are known to our kids, and there's been a good relation there, and the coach, and everybody's been involved in the process. Christine? One more question. Yes. This year, I know that there's been difficulty with ice time in the past, and I know that last year the girls' team, I'm not sure, I can't remember if the boys' team traveled up north somewhere. Right. I can't. Lewiston. They were up in Lewiston, maybe. Mm-hmm. All right. As Chris pointed out, thank you. Where is ice time this year? I mean, are these kids going to be traveling further? Obviously, Hiram's not next door to Scarborough. Yeah. So we would treat this situation very much like we would treat a homeschool student in terms of communication with the students. And so the coach will arrange for that communication, and we're very fortunate this year. I want to knock on wood a little bit, but we're very fortunate this year with our ice time. I think that there was some fear about building a rink in Scarborough, and so Orthopedic Associates, the sports complex where we've skated in the past, has really stepped up, and we're going to be exclusively running our programs out of MHG, out of the Orthopedic Associates sports complex. 
Um, all of our practices will be there. All of our games will be there. We have really um, exclusive ice times. Um, and so we're very, very fortunate this year. I'm knocking on wood and hoping that it continues. But and at the same time, I think that although it slowed down a little bit, I think that there's, there's still a group that's pursuing a rink at Scarborough. And uh, we hope that we hope that they continue to pursue that because the town's been generous with um, the potential location right on campus. And so um, we're, we're going to be very fortunate this year. It's going to be close to us, not so close for the, for the young ladies from uh, Sakopee Valley, but we'll, we'll work through all those, all those uh, issues. Jackie? May, may I ask our parent? I'm sorry I didn't write her name Joke. down. Kathy Joke. Kathy. Oh, yeah. I'd like to ask you a question, please. Does everybody know Ms. Stokes? She's our, uh, our girl who's the president. Right. Mm -hmm. Kathy, uh, Scarborough has a reputation uh, having involved parents. On the one hand, that's very good, and sometimes it's problematic. How is your parents group going to feel uh, if these two youngsters are getting more play time or more ice time than their daughters? Well, I've reached out to the parents. There's several parents here that are in favor of it, and I have several emails with that I brought with me of parents that are in favor of it, and I've heard no negative response from any parents. As far as the girls joining the team, I would hope Again, that would be the case. As Mike said, the girls skated in the summer program with the girls, so I think everybody's got a connection established already, as well as some of the parents even knowing the parents. So I, I think it'll be a good fit. Good. Thank you very much. Okay. So, um, Mike, is is this a request to? It says application to for the establishment of this cooperative team. Um, the day is July 2015, Mrs. Doak was just saying it's the one year thing. You mentioned a cycle of two years, so is, is this a never ending thing here? Where, where part, of the, part of the MPA requirement is board approval from both school, school systems, and it is a two year cycle. Um, and so your approval tonight. Um, would allow us to move forward and and fulfill that two-year cycle, okay. and that's established by the MPA through 2017. Okay. Anything else? Very good. All in favor? Do we do we have a motion? There a motion, motion. Yet? Okay. Yeah. Do I have a motion? Move approval is printed. Second. Good. Any other discussion? No, seeing none. All in favor? Five plus one and one absentee. Is there anyone else well, wishing, wishing to speak on a topic on the agenda this evening? If so, please come to the podium. <laughs> Very good. 6.0 is our workshop. 6.1, the main Supreme Court will be at Scarborough High School. Give us an update. Um, uh, David, uh, thank you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very thank much. Good luck. <laughs> um, David Creature is here, and I, I've asked David to provide uh, the update. He's basically been organizing this with the uh, uh, Mary Ann Lynch, who um, basically uh, organizes all of the uh, court visits. So, David, you want to give us a little here? brief update? Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Hi. <laughs> we, we, we have high school. We, we have high school. High school. Uh, <laughs> 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 so, um, we're very excited. We're actually thrilled to be able to be given the opportunity to host uh, the main uh, Supreme Judicial Court. It's going to be an October 8th date. This is a Thursday. There are three schools in the state of Maine that are going to be participating: uh, Mount Vernon, uh, excuse me, Mount Blue, Herman, and Scarborough High School. Um, some of the details uh, that I think might interest you: uh, we're going to have basically um, a courtroom uh, transformed from where it typically is into the auditorium of Scarborough High School. Um, the stipulations are basically: we've met, uh, Mr. Legage and I, the administrative team, and others have met. Uh, to go over the logistics piece, but the, probably the, what you would be uh, most interested in is basically uh, the Supreme Court and um, 
their personnel are allowing us as a school district to decide uh, basically who gets to have the opportunity to be a part of this process. So court officials, uh, lawyers, plaintiffs, they are all going to be there, but in terms of who gets to come and, and uh, observe this, we're going to be having uh, all the representatives and local representatives are going to be invited. They've already been invited by uh, the courts. We're going to invite the school board, town council, and all the leadership members of the school district to be a part of this as well. And then the rest of this is going to be an, uh, an educational opportunity for the students and staff of Scarborough High School. This is a normal school day, so we have to be able to manage and run our school. So. We're not opening it up to the general public, um, but our plan is um, they will arrive around uh, 8 a.m. Um, they have a lawyer from Drummond Woodson who is going to be a designated lawyer at the very beginning of each of the three cases. She will address uh, everybody that's in attendance and basically highlight what's happening in this case. And then there are 9, 9.45 and 10.30 for the, for the three cases. So she addresses everybody that's in attendance and explains to them what's going on. Each lawyer has 15 minutes with the justices to present their case. Then the justices leave. There's a 15 minute transition. During that time, anybody in attendance can come up and ask questions of the lawyers who are mitigating the case. And um, Ms. Parks from Drummond Whitsum is going to be kind of the moderator of that piece. So we already know um, what these particular cases are because they provided them to us. So we can share this information with our students and staff. They can study and do whatever they want in advance. Uh, questions can either be specific to the cases, they can be on the spot based on what they just observed, or they can be just about the judicial process and what happens in, in court cases. It's really up to us what we want to ask. Um, so that's going to basically be the framework for each case. So 15 minutes in between, there's a transition as two lawyers are leaving. Uh, or answering questions, two lawyers are coming in to present, the justices come back, and it's the same thing. It's a 30 minutes, 15, 15, they leave for 15 minutes, hmm. question period for 15 minutes, and then they conclude with the last piece. Um, when that is concluded at the very end, um, the justices have basically offered to stay and have lunch with whoever we designate to have lunch with them. So we basically, as a leadership, opened this up to our school. Just today, uh, I shared it at a faculty meeting with our staff. They're going to share it with the students in their classes, and we're going to have um, students who would like to go and, and be a part of this process be able to decide within the next week. Um, that's really basically the details. Uh, it's a great honor for us, a great educational uh, opportunity, and I can tell you that everybody that we've dealt with uh, from the Supreme Court, they have been fantastic, and they're just very excited to be bringing um, this court session to Scarborough High School. They toured our facility and we're very impressed with um, how fortunate we are to have the facility we have as you know, and they think it's going to be a perfect setup for their needs. And again, David, that's Thursday, October 8th, starting at 9 a.m. Thursday, October 8th. It begins at 9 a.m. <coughs> and it's 9 a.m., 9.45, and 10.30 for the three cases. And that will be on the invite that folks receive. Yes. So. Um, Television media will be uh, invited. That's uh, taken care of by the court. Um, they take care of invitations to local representatives, and then the school can decide who in addition to that. So we'll put the invitations out to you, town council, school leadership, and we've already started the process in-house. Questions? Emma. So um, even if students don't have like a study hall per se or something, like a free period, will they get the opportunity to go and like experience this? Great question. So whether you have a class at that time that wants to come or you have a class period seven and they want to come or maybe you're a part of some student activity that uh, student government, this type of process is something you're very interested in, any student or any staff member can come regardless of whether they have something at that time. So is it just up, uh, say a student wants to go not a part of any like student group or anything. They want to go like individually. Can they um, get permission from their teacher or something to yes. be excused from class to experience it? Yes, it's open to all students, all staff. The only logistics thing that was tough was we were trying to decide whether we were going to have maybe freshmen and sophomore come for the first session and then another group in the second session. But you're talking about transitioning several hundred students in a 15-minute period of time, where they said it's a very tight ship. We've got 15 minutes 
and that's also the question and answer period. So logistically, we thought it was going to be almost impossible. So we have about a 750 seat capacity there. So we think if we just open it up, and we want, we really ideally just want whoever wants to be there to want to be there, to be honest with you, because we have to follow all the court decorum and make sure it's a very respectful process. So opening it up and having people who actually want to be there was more important to us than trying to get the entire school to come through and experience it. And since you're on the school board, <laughs> you get to sit the front row. A couple questions, Dave. Um, so you, you answered my first question about will there be a transition of like freshman in session one and sophomore session two. Um, so you've answered that question for me. Are there going to be some classes, like let's say a civics class or something, that's going to be required to be there, whether the two students, you know, are, are optioning that or not? So that was uh, we posed this to our staff just today. So they have an opportunity to, to process that and come and speak to us about how whether they want to have their whole class go there as a part of that curriculum and that class experience, or just open it up to them. I can imagine that if a <coughs> teacher wants the class to go there to be exposed to this, mm -hmm. the entire class is going to go. It will be a part of an educational experience. Right, and so that kind of comes into my my other question too about about scheduling and things. Like, say you've got a seventh period social studies class, but the, the teacher thinks it's great for the, the students to be there. Um, <coughs> doing any kind of period adjustments or scheduling adjustments to accommodate that, or is it going to be just kind of a, you know, uh, if you've got a math class that period, let's say, you're going to be excused from the math class and just still go to the social studies class in the, at seven period. Right, that's kind okay. of similar to what Emma was asking. So yep. we want to first wait and see uh, what type of response we get and where those responses are coming from. And then we'll take a look and see if we have to manipulate the schedule. Okay. If there's a, a strong possibility that, that not all the schools are going to want to participate in this, so we'll have to continue with the normal schedule at that time. Mm -hmm. But if there's a seventh period class, civics class that wants to be a part of this, and it's during period two, uh, they will be allowed to come and do that, and we'll work on excusing them from their period two class. Okay. And then just the the, the other question was was um, how are you going to you going to do the regular <laughs> class transitions? How are you going to isolate the classroom or the, the auditorium from the regular class changes out in the rest of the school? There won't be. A, I'm sorry, I shouldn't be not shaking my head. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. Happened, I apologize. That's right. Uh, I should let you finish. Before <laughs> you <finish. laughs> right. I'm used to that. Don't worry. <laughs> We've gotten used to that. That's okay. Um, so we're going to turn off the bells, okay. and the entire schedule will be by voice direction. So we'll have a plan in place to make sure. We're fortunate. The beginning of it is right during our uh, transition between period one and period two. And then the other one is going to happen a little bit a little bit before our transition between periods two and three. It's about 9:45. So our transitions will be by voice direction, okay. and we're going to let the court know that. So uh, unfortunately, the auditorium is already a place where the intercom does not come in. So when we do it by voice direction, they're not going to hear it in there anyway. I'm just thinking outside traffic. It gets kind of loud and busy in the halls when kids transition. The doors will be closed, yeah. and we'll have personnel in, in locations to ensure it's kept. Okay. Like it should be. And then last question, which I think I already know the answer to it, but um, were there any accommodations or any adjustments we had to make to the facilities or costs associated with having the court come in to accommodate that, or is it is it a fairly smooth, seamless transition? Notice how I had my head. <laughs> That was good discipline. But I was great to be able to go. So uh, no adjustments are necessary. As okay. a matter of fact, they came in the spring and met with us to see if the facility met their needs, and they found that it did. It actually works out very well because the, the justices can transition right off stage. I don't know if you call it an even catch stage right or stage left. Which is it? It's stage right. Stage right. Thank you. Ms. Ketch would be proud of you. Stage right, <laughs> and there's actually dressing rooms right in the hallway, which is a very private area, and then right around the corner is admin two, which is where we're going to put them in a the conference room and, and have the things thing for like refreshments. And so they think that the setup is actually ideal for a uh, school. And then last one, I promise. Sorry. Well, the, I know. Well, I'm, it's, it's just closer. Are they going to be actually deciding the cases and ruling right then and there, or are they just going to hear arguments and they'll rule at another time? Or are they going to come back in and say, "Okay, we've heard arguments at the nine o'clock period. We've ruled according to the plaintiff because of this and this, or we've ruled because of the defendant for this and this." You know what I mean? Is there going to be an, ex an explanation like that, or is it simply just hearing oral arguments and how the process works? Um, according to the information, Mary Ann Lynch, by the way, was the representative that came. She was fantastic. According to the information she gave us, typically it's just the lawyers that are there that are um, they're making their arguments, and then the justices actually, when they go back into their into our uh, conference room and admin two, they're actually.
actually going to be talking a little bit about the case during that time. So there's, uh, according to what she told us, she didn't indicate there'd be a ruling. I think they hear the case, and the ruling is made at a later date. Okay. I can't confirm that, but I think that's correct. I, I think I'm that's already correct. shaking my head. Okay. Yes. Well, I, yeah. no, it's, you know, it's like the Supreme Court. They don't right. rule when they hear oral arguments. It's, right. It's they take time. It's, it's, they need their clerk. Yeah. You know. okay. It's such a tight schedule that I can't imagine there's a, a capacity within the schedule to do that. I mean, it's it's 30 minutes, 15 minute transition with questions, 30 minutes, it's the same thing. And it's, she said it's like clockwork. So based on that, I don't I think. Well, I'll defer to the lawyer. Yeah, no, they, I, I mean, no, they're not going to rule on anything. It's just oral arguments. Okay. And your last part of this, the part three of your five-part question, <laughs> is the financial piece. And so, the, in terms of the financial piece, uh, the only part I can answer is that uh, the two court marshals weren't able to come that day, so they're going to meet at a later time with uh, our school resource officer and myself to determine uh, what type of security is necessary and whether we have to have local PD. Two marshals will be there, and we'll have our own internal security with our SRO, but they'll let us know whether we have to have additional uh, Scarborough police. Okay. We won't know that until the marshals meet with us. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. No more questions. <laughs> okay. He rests. The prosecution rests. <laughs> 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 Anybody else? Uh, any well, I, was, I was just wondering if you already knew what um, the cases were. We did. I went over that prior to you uh, yeah, coming probably. in. So I was at no uh, house for my children. So no, I no, I'm not trying to be funny. <laughs> yeah. I just uh, there, there's uh, we've been given in advance what those cases are going to be. So what when you receive the email from me, I'm going to have for you a link that will bring you right to the main okay. Supreme Court, okay. and they're going to list. Oh, they'll list them right there. Yeah. yeah and we're going to provide that to our students and, and teachers in case, like you were talking about, it's going to be an educational experience in the classroom. Right. They'll be able to go over and review those cases in advance. Right. And perhaps uh, prepare questions on those if they want. Okay. He's not spilling the beans tonight. <laughs> I have, to be honest, I have not read those four pages yet, but I will prior to. He's not prepared to give full disclosure yet. <laughs> very exciting, though. We're very honored to be able to. And Chris can't ask questions. No. no they, you're out of town. The last time I asked the judge a question, it didn't go well. <laughs> you're out of town that day. I know. I'm gonna be. Do I need to be out of town that day? Is that what you're telling me? I was just wondering, if, if everybody wanted to go, we don't have the capacity, do we? To sit we'll have to adjust it. If everybody does want to go, then we're going to have to do some kind of transition where there'll be some of the school will go during one, one session. of the sessions, and then we'll transition them out, okay. which may impact the question and answer period. but. Yeah. If most of our students want to be a part of this, we might have to accommodate that. Okay. Good. Thank you, David. Okay. Great. Right. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Exciting. 6.2, preparation work for the November 17th school board retreat. Um, in preparation uh, for that retreat, and um, the board will be renewed at that time, um, I thought it would be good to just take a few minutes tonight while we have a little bit of time and um, get some input from all of you. So I'd like to, I'd like to first direct you to the, um, the school board goals for 15-16. And um, this is going to be pretty um, not really exciting for people to be watching on, on TV. But I'm, I'm going to give you some time, and I'll show you um, what, I, what I'm asking you to do in terms of getting, getting some input in preparation for that meeting. Okay. <coughs> this one, 14, 15, the highlight. Okay, so for school board goals, um, what I'd like you to do is to look at the, um, the what, what was committed to number 14, 15, and and, um, and it's just your quick assessment. It will just give us a starting place in terms of looking at the new goals. Um, if you identify that goal as being at level one, and all you need to do is to put one, um, that means it's done, we, we, we're done with it, drop it. it, it doesn't have a life beyond on this plan. If you identify it as two, it, maybe it needs to be just refocused or refined or updated, okay? If it's a level three, it means keep going full force on this. Maintain current um, effort and current focus on those, that goal. And level four is um, this really needs, we, this is something that we probably are going to need to accelerate the effort on. Okay, so it really, 
is really much in the way of a gradation in terms of done to, oh my God, we still, this is really important, high priority, and we need to invest some time. Questions about that? And you, um, no names are required. But what I will do is have these, the synopsis for us, and I think it would just make it much easier for us to, to see how we're feeling about the goals. And, and I don't know that we did a formal reflection on the 14, 15 goals for the board, so this would sort of constitute at least a, a brief um, swipe at that. So you want us to do that now? Mm -hmm. I have a question. Yes. I mean, these are all just general goals. Yes, they always happen. But I mean, I can't say to goal one, work with and evaluate the superintendent, done. No, it's, um, no, no, no. it's really you're looking at the other piece. It's, the goals have stayed basically the same. And, and what you're really, what you're really um, rating, Jody, is the ABC. Okay. So not the specific goals. Uh -huh. No, those are, those are, those are more, um, those are basically uh, goals that have stayed in place. Those uh, uh, five or six goals have been the longer term goals. Right. Yeah. Way to clear a room, huh? <laughs> <laughs> My sense is that you might be okay with that, or still finishing it. Wrapping up. I'm slow, but that's right. Yeah, I'm okay. Okay. okay, so um, the next piece that I would uh, direct your attention to is the um, the operating protocol. You have a copy of that as well. I'll just explain something about um, the copy that you have. It's, um, you, you see that it was actually 
adopted back in 2011. So it's been, it's been a long-standing protocol. And we have spent time every year looking at what we need to, or what the board, through self-assessment, they feel they need to continue to focus on. The, the ones that are highlighted are the ones that, through since 2011, have been areas that the board has said, we, we really need to put more effort here. This is a high priority for us. So the question really is, um, in, in not being swayed by the yellow highlight, because we've already focused on it, we may, that may still be a very high priori priority for you. And all you're doing is a rank ranking. So it's really to look at those and say, okay, going forward, given all the work that we have to do, given, given the, um, sort of the, 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 the state of the, of, of the town, the state of the schools, what are, what are your top five? And number one would go to your highest priority in terms of really uh, focusing on that. Number two would be the next highest, three, next highest, it's a little redundant, but I, and, but I think you know what I'm talking about. So you're bas basically ranking one through five, those things that you think really require us to, um, or you as a team, to really be reminded of and focus on, and maybe even talk about some strategies. Jody. Oh, good question. So, will this that we're doing right now I'm gonna be discussed further? Oh, yes, yes, yes. This is just the preliminary work, and instead of sending things out and waiting for you all to send things back, okay. I thought we could just go through this, get this preliminary data done, and I will use it and bring it back on the 17th. The next nice thing that all of us respond to is emails. Right. <laughs> What? <laughs> yeah. I said that's a nice way of saying not all of us respond timely no, no, to your no. emails. <laughs> in some, in your business, and you, you carved out this time, and I knew it would only take a few minutes. Yeah. Easy to do it as a group. And so this will be discussed with leadership too. Like all of us will be sitting November seventeenth. No. no, it's really it's it's really it's primarily the school board's uh, okay. retreat, and and you know anticipating. Um, that we will have a full board of seven seven people at that time.
Or you can work it out. The maintenance department or the custodial department? No, no, no. The oh. maintenance department. Hmm. Yeah, we can, we we can, can ask. Um, I mean, I'll look. Uh, I didn't think to look on the website, but it. I don't know. I just yeah, wrote that, it, you know, in addition to the top, blah, 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 the custodians, it says here we have two new excellent maintenance people, and I just wrote who here. Hmm. I'll ask. Um, and I'm we'll going to ask we'll you to give a directory, or, or we'll give that to you from the top. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. We'll give it to the whole board. There have been... And how is Kelly? Is she back yet? No. Kelly Crosby? No. No, she's doing well, but she's not back. Um, very extensive list, very thorough. Is there anything on the list that should have gotten done that didn't even have a chance to get to? This is what he this said that it has been done. Okay. Oh, that was. Yeah. Oh, that, that he had hoped to do? Yeah. Is there anything like that needed to be done I think, that wasn't I think he, that was pretty much his. Okay. His Okay. Okay. I don't know if you've ever seen Todd's list, how he does things. It's pretty meticulous. Oh. <laughs> and the like the project manager, he works on lists. Project manager. Project manager, yeah, exactly. Uh, you, you, you folks should know, <laughs> under the middle school, the two main windows on the south side of the cafeteria were replaced due to deterioration. When those were installed, there was a space a space left that was about, what, two and a half inches? Mm -hmm. We were in Sioux mode three years, three years before it ever got resolved. It was awful. Wasn't there, was there retention mm -hmm. associated with it? Pardon me? Was there mm -hmm. retention associated yeah. with it? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But what transpired is when the contractor was hired, uh, there wasn't much work. In the last six months that we had, last six months, about the last six months, they hauled off the clerk of the work and, and they went to Massachusetts on another job because they were getting paid more. Hmm. And they sent us a real idiot <laughs> to be nice. Oh, what a time we had. Oh, I still cringe when I think about it. One last, one last piece, and that is, um, what we've done in the past is you've generated some topics that you know you're intrigued by, um, things that you want to learn a little bit more about. This is not the only time that you'll have a chance to generate those, but I'm ready and willing to uh, jot down some topics. You know, for example, the thing that we're exploring now, and it's kind of been coming from a number of multiple directions, is really looking at school schedules and consistent with the whole calendar thing and try to bring that in. So obviously we're going to need to probably spend more time and your workshop for October will actually be, I think it's for October, right? Um, will, will actually be attendance at the, the regional meeting. Um, and in advance of that we're going to have our meeting with the board and the leadership council to talk about school schedules and, and some of the things that we need to be thinking about. I sent an email out to everybody with a couple of dates on it. Um, what other topics, what other, what other, um, you know, things are you hearing about that you, that you think that the board really needs to spend a little bit more time learning about? I feel like there was one that we talked about at our last meeting. And we said, oh, that could be a workshop. And I can't remember. <laughs> but you can't remember. At the last meeting, I might, I might have it written down. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in a precarious position of mm. not being able to participate in the, in the future workshop sessions. But I think if there are areas to discuss, I think it is a lot of community outreach, communication, um, goal setting, that kind of stuff. And I think we, we always seem to kind of circle back around those key issues, whether it's budget or it's positive things or schedule or, ca or, or calendar or something like that, um, you know, maybe bringing in, um, I know at um, the research center, Maymed Research Center, mm -hmm. they had some um, marketing people that were free uh, last year, I think it was, that they had been working on a, a, um, a social media type of outreach, outreach program yeah. that they 
had grant money for, the grant had dried up, but they had the resources and they were going to maybe come in and help us a little bit with that stuff. So maybe focusing around those general topics of outreach, communication, um, you know. Um, getting out ahead of. So it was inquiry teams and inquiry based learning. Of, okay. I mean, yeah. right. that was it. Most of us know what the obstacles are when, yeah. when we're coming forward with something. Say, like with yeah. changing our calendar, you know, last year, I mean, most of us thought that there could be some parental pushback and had we maybe approached it a little differently. Mm -hmm. Well, did so we decide we were going to have a calendar committee? Yes, but what I'm saying is, is with other instances, similar to that. So say say somebody says, oh, hey, you know, by the way, we're going to change to have well, even, even something. We're going to let the kids out two off. hours right. later or something. Right. And all of a sudden we know that people are going to be up in arms over it. Maybe we ought to think about before so, we bring it forward publicly right. that we, we've... Right. And we can we can build, we can move those yeah. things onto the calendar as you need them. Right. You know, I think there was I mean, you, you basically hosted a public workshop that specifically dealt with the calendar because there right. was so much mm -hmm. interest. Right. right. That's not typical <laughs> right. in terms and of what happened. And I and I wasn't thinking about the workshop around specific issues. I was thinking more along a general a general process or a general I don't want to say policy, but you know how we approach issues in the, in the public, how we get the, you know, what's the best communication method, regardless of what the issue is. Hmm. Um, you know, more more general practice kind of things, not necessarily policy and, and locking, locking us into things, but hmm. a general approach of, you know, how should we be getting out ahead of the curve maybe a little bit, what are ways we can do to get ahead of the issues, identify them, get ahead of them, <laughs> communicate that, that kind of stuff. Do you mean surrounding the budget? No, any surrounding issue. Any, 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 any issue. issue. Yeah. yeah. Like, do we have do we have like communications? For example, communications is really the point point contact person for outside questions coming in. Um, you know, or is that an ad hoc type of, of <laughs> issue depending on what the status is? Is that something that's determined every time, or are there generally established roles and responsibilities? You know, the chair does um, a media responsing response or something along those lines. Mm -hmm. But just have kind of a general framework in place of how how those responses should be organized and come. You know, somebody doing an FAQ page. How are we getting it up on the on the website? Who's responsible for that? Who's who's organizing the whole big picture kind of thing? <laughs> so just to piggyback on that thought, mine was kind of a extension of that was more about you know whether we might want to sit and talk about our approach with one the community and two the town council. So you know. What what might we brainstorm about in terms of how we might do our work differently in the community and with the council? I mean, because you know, this year we came up with just the two finance groups trying to do that work, and you know, I'm just thinking there's a lot of talk right now about how else can things be done. So that be the case. Can we then um, have our own discussion so that we have yeah. something to put forth? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I would I would like to sometime discuss what one of my personal priorities for this next year uh, is to reinstate seventh grade activities, and and that's going to take a cache of money that we currently don't have. And and I've asked the question before and have been told, for example, that uh, date receipts go into the general fund. That's fine. But what do those date receipts pay for? So I would like to see sometime at one of our workshops a breakdown of how many people does it take to run a football game? I'm not talking about the coaches or the officials. I'm talking about the athletic director and, and personnel that the athletic director has to see gets paid. How many people does that take? And the same thing for other activities. I, we don't charge for too many activities, but uh, and, and uh, at a basketball game, for example, I know there are usually three or four people 
taking money for the tickets in there. Can How I, much does that right. cost us, and does the gate receipt that we get cover that cost? Maybe I can broaden that out a little bit and just look at um, possible revenue sources and more efficiency of operations, because I think it, it translates not just to the athletic side of things. We've, we've been exploring that for a couple years now with, with Kate and, and, and Mike and I trying to look at different ways to evaluate the whole system of athletics and activities in terms of a, a, a cost efficiency basis, whether it's pooling resources or partnering with other groups, or uh, revenue generation, be it sponsorships or booster organizations or how we, how we collectively look at that structure. So I think, I think your, your focus on the particulars of the games, of the football game, let's say, or basketball with game fees and stuff, I think that's a great first step into a much broader picture of starting to talk about the structural needs of the community as a whole. I mean, we've seen it with, with seventh, uh, elimination of seventh grade sports and activities and the, the I don't want to say the, 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 the response from the community of how do we preserve that? How, what can we do to help keep that? That's a connection that has to come through an, a, a collaborative effort of of sitting down with all the stakeholders, for lack of a better word, with parents, boosters, administration, board members. What are we doing collectively as a town? Because if we start doing tweaking things here and there, that's what we've always done. And we've kind of created this amalgamous uh, system that is difficult to control. Not everybody understands the intricacies between community services and our and the administration and, the, and who's managing what, how the scheduling works. There's so many tentacles that, that involve that that I think, I think you're right, it needs to be addressed and I would pull that, that into a much bigger. My question. Mm -hmm. Because when I saw this, first of all, I thought we should have had this back in, I thought we should have had some preparation to know it was coming. Well, this is what? The this, hockey team. The, oh, the hockey piece. The hockey piece. If people have been talking about this for six months, it's then it's, since it's very July, new to me. Since July. It's Pardon absolutely me? new to me. Well, then that's wrong in my opinion also, but that's beside the point. If we're going to go out on a limb and, and uh, allow two young people to come to Scarborough to play on our hockey team, it's a risk. It's not going to cost us any money, but it's still a risk. They're not our students. They could be, they're probably wonderful kids. But we eliminated seventh grade activities two years ago. And when the parents wanted to fund those activities, we were told that that's not possible because you eliminated, meaning us, the sport. And it's too much to manage. We don't have enough personnel to manage that. But that, if I, sorry, just to, that's not the reason why it wasn't allowed though, Jackie. That's not why. That's not why. But, but sorry, go ahead. If we can do this, we should have been able to figure out a way to support our own students, even if it was the parents paying the freight, which they wanted to do. Now, I don't want to get into a philosophical discussion about Not that. Philosophical. I'm simply saying that we need to work harder to provide better for our students. Okay, so, so I, what I captured was finances, uh, revenue sources, Athletics and activities, for example, gate receipts, and really digging into that. It might be something more for finance committee, um, because as Chris said, there has been some ongoing efforts there. But this was really to just get some topics up yeah. here, not yeah. to not to we'll solve the problems right. right now. But so I have two more. Okay. One is I think we need to do a really good job of looking at our facilities this year. Long, the long-term facilities plan. Yeah, with, and, and come up with a short and long-term plan. Um, and then my last one is um, a way in which we can bring simplification and clarification to the school budget. What it is, what it looks like, what's in it. 
like physically how, how, like how it looks. We reduce look. that yeah. to a simpler form for the community to understand. Maybe um, someone mentioned to me um, the idea of having um, budget process 101 class one evening at the high school in the auditorium where you had different important key people to speak on different components of it. What is it that happens between November and May or June when you vote? But I think there's also, part of that is we can do that and that's great, but, but we get people there. We also need to change how it's presented because people aren't going to show up for that seminar, class 101 on the how the school budget's developed. They're just not going to show up. They've got 100 million other things to do. Well, it's just, so I think it was just one idea from somebody. So, you know, no, no, no. Whatever. I mean, I it would just, as long as there's something that brings it. You know, I mean, it's, it's worth trying and showing that we're giving an effort to mm -hmm. explain it to people, but I also think the way it is presented. It's overwhelming, right? And it but just needs to be explored. And I think to, just to talk about topics, yeah. um, it may be beneficial to have one set of topics on how to interact on the community level, and a second workshop on how to interact with the council, because as yeah. we've said in the past, there there really are two different tactics and strategies that are necessary for each different audience. I said that. Right. Yeah. But separately now, but, but, one yeah, but that's what I'm saying. Like, so you know, to talk about what's the best way to get the data out to, or the information out to the community, that's one. That's one discussion. What's the best way to, to streamline or make the communication with the the council more effective? That's kind of a separate issue. There is some overlap. Obviously, yeah. there always is. But but it's almost like there's. They, they could be two distinct different workshop sessions, I, I think. And, and what Kelly said at our last meeting about somehow putting on our website frequently asked questions and explaining our terminology, we do education speak and, and quite frankly the majority of people don't understand it. And, and we do it frequently because we're so embedded in it. It's just part of our psyche now mm -hmm. and part of our vocabulary. And that's why you'll notice I ask questions. That, so it has to be explained so people know what we're talking about. I gr truly do know most times what we're talking about. That's the best question, Jackie. The one you already know the answer to. <laughs> <laughs> Any other? I mean, again, this is not an exhaustive list. It was really to just capture what you may have been thinking about. And I think we've captured some of the things that we've talked about before, some things going forward, the, the, the uh, simplification of the language. Um, I, I think, I, I think good, a NEASC update at the high school, that's a, big, that's a big issue at an appropriate time. Where are we at? Where do we need to be? Yep. What's moving forward? Um, I don't know where this one would fall in, and it's, I'm stealing Kelly's thought, but she hasn't brought it up, so I'm just throwing it out there. Okay. So you can help? Can you know where to bring Kelly's thought? Can we figure out where it would fall, or if it would even fall yeah, in? Yeah. I don't even know if it's in our wheelhouse. Yeah. But we've but talked about ways, it's almost, there needs to be a PR sort of done for the high school with the middle school students, meaning is there a way to have a mentorship program where a seventh grader is matched with a sophomore and they go up once a month or once a quarter and do something because seventh graders aren't getting into the high school. So all they're seeing is the auditorium and the gymnasium. That's about it. And Chevrolet and Macaulay our and whoever are saying, come on in, check out our cool school. Come meet our cool kids. We'll let you sit in on classes and things like that. So we're losing the, the marketing campaign to the private schools because parents are invited to those as well, not only just the kids. So the parents are like, oh my gosh, the kids are so nice and they answer all our questions at lunch. I'm like, we could do that. We could do that because we have nice kids and we have cafeteria. <laughs> and, so and, and, our new, and our new cafeteria. You know, I'm just, it's not that simple. I know it's not that <laughs> simple, but, you know, schedules, it could be a nightmare. But I think it's worth it in the long run so seventh graders 
as something to aspire to. And, and it could be an ongoing thing where the seventh grader is the sophomore. Then it's an eighth grader, you know, eighth junior. And you know, then like when they're freshmen, they now have the senior buddy that was there. And, yep. yeah, you know, the other kids are doing it. Too. Got it? Idea. Anything else oh, that you want to add? Oh, well, that looks like about... That looks like about a year's months. worth of work. <laughs> <laughs> that gets us through two meetings. <laughs> <laughs> but I would recommend that if we're going to do that high school, middle school mentoring yeah. thing, that be one of the sooner topics because all the marketing material is going to the parents, right? Yeah. Of the seventh graders. And they have their shadow days in February, March, and then it's too late. Yeah. But they sign their deposit checks and they're gone. I guess that I would would have liked to see an update too on the standardized testing. I know we're transitioning out of that's the state one. That's, 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 that's part of that's part of our regular calendar of okay. of uh, workshops. And one, yeah. yeah, I know that, but I mean just to get that's, an idea. That's the point. That, that, that will definitely be there. Yeah, the, um, the, the workshop schedule is already populated with some things that are regular updates, in, including um, updates on the uh, student-centered uh, plan. And um, we're now like we're now moving to some dashboards, which are sort of the, uh, using just a different format and some some different symbols to really look at are things on track. It's more like a kind of like a. a I don't want to make it more complicated than what it is. It's really it's a visual representation of what's happening in the high school, what's happening in the middle school, what's happening in you know each of the in the departments and so on, and and um, where we are in terms of being on track or not on track with the commitments that we've made in the 24-month plan. So and so that will be introduced as well. But, but that's a regular update that's scheduled. Do you have your laptop yet? No. We Two don't. weeks or well, one week. Um, we're supposed to be getting them next week, hopefully, if everyone turns in their paperwork. But it's as uh, right now, no, not a lot of people have. The rollout is starting on Monday, and it will take about seven to eight days to roll out all the laptops. And it's going to be seniors first, juniors, sophomores. Of course. Of course. <laughs> You, you've, gone without them, you've gone without them <laughs> for the longest time. That's true. Basically and you earned them. Right. Before else, so it's okay. You earned them. <laughs> Is there anything else? Middle school has them. Anybody else have anything they want to do? No? You all set? I got everything. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Second. Very good. Uh, all, in, all in favor? Oh, wait. <laughs> oh, there we go. <laughs> no, all in favor. <laughs> Sorry, did you have another? No, I think I'm